This is Tim Olson from John L. Scott, your trusted real estate advisor, with a quick report showing you where things stand with regards to the coronavirus pandemic and the real estate industry, and what you need to know as of today, March 25th, 2020. However, I want to start off by wishing every human on our planet all the best as we're quickly dealing with this pandemic. I also want to express my deepest gratitude for those fighting this war for us on a, all the front lines, all of our first responders helping our communities on a daily basis, and I pray for the wisdom for the doctors coming up with a cure for this very crude virus. Here in Washington State on Tuesday night, March 23rd, Governor Inslee is closing all the businesses that are non-essential as of March 25th at midnight. Real estate has been deemed as non-essential. This means that he will only, we will only be working remotely as agents. There will be no open houses and no personal showings of homes for sale in the market for the next two weeks. However, the real estate industry has worked quickly to try and implement plans to accommodate these laws in order to keep current transactions on track. The closing and escrow companies in our state are deemed essential. They're putting plans together to keep things open and flowing. While there will be some new procedures, we're doing what we can to move things forward. As a real estate agent, I'm expecting a lot of activity just to get pushed out past this freeze. We're going to see more of an active summer, fall, and even in the beginning of the winter time. There's another thing I want to talk about, though, and that has to do with fraud. This is something we have to deal with on a daily basis, even on the best of days. But now it's been increased as a result of people being home and using email a lot more, working from home. If you receive wire instructions over email, don't just rely on what those numbers say. Confirm with the closing office. Independently confirm with your agent. Make sure that you're not being scanned because there's no shortcuts when it comes to protecting your money. You have to take a very active role in trying to make sure your money is being held correctly and being sent to the right people. Please, please reread this if you have to. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. I'm going to run you through a few slides here just to give you a good sense as to where we are, where we're headed, and what history has shown to us in the past. The expectations from the experts are that we're likely in a recession right now. That's why the stock market has acted as violently as it has. But there's a chart, as you can see, from Goldman Sachs on March 17th that says they're probably going to have a very weak second quarter, followed by a strong rebound in the third and fourth quarter and even into 2021. People often get worried when they hear the word recession. However, you need to know that the truth behind home prices and what happens during recession. This chart here is going to show the last five recessions we face in the United States. As you can see, typically home prices are not really affected that negatively. The last recession in 2008 had a significant impact because the housing market actually caused the recession. I want to be clear, in speaking with and listening to the experts here in the last few weeks, this is not another great recession unfolding like we had in 2008. Let me show you why. This first chart is going to show you that we have a very low level of housing inventory for sale. As you can see, back in 2007, we had 8.2 months of inventory, and today we have about 3.1 months of inventory. In eastern Washington, in homes priced between zero and 500,000, we actually have less than one month of inventory. So things are quite different. This chart here is an interesting one that shows that Americans aren't using their homes as an ATM machine like they did back in 2005, six, and seven. As you can see, the total cash out refinance equity that's coming out of homes is quite a lot less than it was back before the last housing cycle burst. This is a pretty scary chart. This shows how easy it was to get a loan back in the previous housing bubble. You can see that the regulators and the banks and the lenders still have very high standards placed on people trying to get a loan. That's why the mortgage credit availability is so much lower than it was back in the previous housing bubble. Here we're going to show you that the average American spent just over 25% of their paycheck back in 2006 to purchase a home and make their payments. Today, that number is just over 15%, showing that the average American has funds to purchase other things. And as they refinance, that number should continue to go down with lower rates. The last points I want to make with you is, are about the economy. What happens and where do we stand? The last significant move lower in housing prices, the markets experienced years of price appreciation nationally, even double digit gains at times. This has simply not occurred in the last few years leading up to this pandemic. So we're in much more solid footing. We showed you this chart earlier, but I believe it's worth realizing again that just because we have a recession doesn't necessarily mean that home prices collapse. In fact, with artificially low interest rates and the packages that are being put together to help the economy by the US Congress say that if 
we even have a recession and it's short-lived based on the information that we have today that home prices will likely rise this year and maybe even rise next year as much as expected i want to recognize that yes the stock market has crashed on expectations of weaker global and domestic economic activity however we've experienced this before as you can see in the previous two massive market corrections which are the tax on 9 11 and the dot-com revaluation annual home prices actually went up in our country before I leave you, I want to show you a quick report card that shows you what's actually happening here in, locally in Spokane County. I want to start with your focus on the center of the screen where it shows the total population of roughly 502,000. What I found interesting is that of our total population, we have roughly 196,000 renters or about 39% of the population. Of those renters, 25% can actually afford to purchase a home. When you combine this with a chart of the new annual household formations just to the right, and the first time home buyers, we need more homes. We don't have enough homes built. This shows that we're actually still have a shortage and that prices will continue to probably move up. When you combine this with the total employment in the lower left of this chart with the affordability index of owning a home on the bottom right, you, can, you can't hope to be optimistic for the Spokane County. It's this economy has been very strong here locally, maybe more so than many other parts of the country. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Please understand that I'm here to help and helping people is my passion. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, which is why I wanted to show you this information today. I put this together because I want people to know the truth. I believe people often can be misled by the media and that worries can sometimes be heavy on your mind. If I can be of assistance in anything related to the housing market, please let me know. I take pride in the relationships I have with the industry and can find you the help you may need all the way from a handyman to a lender to speak with, to providing you a personalized valuation of your home so you just know where you stand. My contact information is here and I'm consistently putting out additional information on social media. So please follow me or become friends too if we aren't already. Please feel free to share this presentation with anybody that you think might help.